Hi everyone, it's the Jacks Left. For Wednesday, May 22nd, 2013, I'm George Favar, and welcome to a special series on the Jacks Left channel called Who Runs Jacksonville? In 2012, on my other channel, on the Left Turn Network, I talked about the people that run Jacksonville in a new special series called Who Runs Jacksonville? And now, today, in 2013, I bring it on to the Jacks Left channel with a reboot, if you will, of Who Runs Jacksonville. In this first episode, I look at the politicos of Jacksonville, our elected leadership. In future episodes on this channel of Who Runs Jacksonville, I'll talk about the various uh, civic and business leaders of Jacksonville, as well as groups uh, that are impacting our city on a day-to-day -day basis. First, let's begin with Mayor Alvin Brown, our first African-American mayor, elected as the uh, first Democrat since 1991. Also, he was uh, elected uh, in one of the closest uh, city elections in our history. I'm very encouraged by what I've seen out of the Brown administration. He's not been afraid to challenge the big issues, to take on the big issues, which are big challenges. He has recently put together a big pension deal subject to the approval of the city council, which I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, and this pension deal could be a substantial legacy for his first term. Uh, going forward, there could be some very big savings for the city. Uh, this would fix the pension uh, problems uh, with our sheriff's office and with, with the fire department. So I'm very encouraged by that, as well as his effort to substantially revitalize uh, downtown Jacksonville. Uh, he has provided the leadership necessary to get a day center open for the homeless population. So we'll see what results from that. Uh, he has had to work with the city council and we will see in the coming year or so what will happen with our city budget, with taxes, and there are some challenges out there on the horizon. There still is a problem with foreclosures in our, in our uh, neighborhoods, and how he addresses this issue I think will be uh, important. Uh, I, I think that that, uh, that could be a big impact, uh, have a big impact for him as he uh, runs uh, not only in the Democratic primary, but ultimately uh, for re-election in the general election. If I had to make a, uh, make a decision on who I felt uh, would be uh, elected mayor in 2015, I would say he would be re-elected at this point. That he would win the Democratic primary and be re-elected because of his efforts to, uh, to not only do the things that are needed for Jacksonville, but also for him to uh, do what he can to pull in people that are a little bit more to the right of the spectrum. Uh, so we'll see. Will the Republicans put up a Tea Party clone uh, as his opponent? Uh, will there be a substantial Democratic primary? These are valid questions to think about. And it's questions I think he should think about as he puts together his re-election campaign. Uh, but believe it or not, I think it's still down to the fact of that old phrase, it's the economy stupid. And uh, it may not be as much as what you think, it may be more people looking around at the neighborhood and not being satisfied with what they see. And that would be something he'll have to address. Uh, so while the downtown revitalization effort uh, is uh, certainly uh, great in the fact that we will, I think, begin to start to see uh, a turning points and changes happening, uh, it will be also what happens out in the neighborhoods, out in the suburbs, that will uh, matter as well. And something you should keep an eye on. That's what I think. All right, the city council. I'm not going to focus as much on the city council in this uh, in this special series. I'll be looking at more in reports in the future. Uh, I will point out a couple personalities. We have the city councilman Bill Bishop. We also have a substantial five-member contingent. Uh, I've looked at the First Baptist Church over the past uh, several uh, uh, past six months or so. Uh, I did a special report. Uh, last year, uh, looking at the First Baptist Church and the role that it plays on the city council and the role that it plays in our city. There are five uh, city council members that are members of the First Baptist Church. And uh, that does have an impact when it comes to things like entertainment downtown. First Baptist Church owns a very substantial amount 
of property downtown, and led by the city councilman that many people on the left uh, love to hate, uh, and and say that with with um, a level of amusement, not in a uh, more in an idea of of um, respecting where he comes from, but expecting though that uh, his perspective on things is is very askew, and thankful for the fact that there are 19 members of our council rather than uh, than just him and a couple people. Uh, the fact is is that he has had quite a uh, uh, amount of um, publicity, uh, specifically when it comes to the entertainment area uh, of our Metropolitan Park. Uh, he's been leading a effort to curtail uh, concerts at Mount Metropolitan Park. Strange, though, how Metropolitan Park uh, was a concert venue, uh, and it's on the river. It's a big park with a big pavilion, uh, but... I really have to say one thing, though, about the city council, and that's the people that choose to lead a what I would call a Mayburyization of our downtown, rolling back things up to where it may have been in the 50s and, and the 60s, where really you just show up and work in our half-vacant city uh, downtown. Maybe you'll have lunch at the food court, uh, and then you'll go home. Uh, and that is the kind of feeling, I think, that we're getting from the city council based on this and the strange effort in Hemming Plaza to, to change things. I understand that that um, really when you look at changing architecture and changing the kinds of things that are going on in the park, maybe even trying to make kind of like a private park, those kinds of things, uh, that really does catch people's attention. I understand the homeless population must be dealt with, and as I spoke with earlier, spoke about earlier, uh, Mayor Brown uh, has been working on that. So we'll see what the future holds, but I would look out for this Mayberization of downtown and what that could impact, how that could be detrimental to a revitalization. And that there are two countervailing forces in the city. Uh, an effort of revitalization seems to be really constructively, constructively led by the mayor. And then this contingent on the city council uh, that's kind of like if you've ever seen the movie Footloose. Uh, just, just think the movie Footloose uh, in, the, in the downtown Jacksonville sense of the fact that uh, they're just not really into music and dancing. Okay. All right. So that's the council. I'll be talking more about the council down the road. Now I'll talk about the sheriff. Three-term sheriff John Rutherford. Okay. Uh, quite uh, an accomplishment to be elected. Not once, not twice, but three times by the people of Jacksonville. A kudos to our sheriff, who I think is, if anything, has really led that perception that we're the leading murder capital uh, of Florida, that's finally been surrendered to South Florida, and uh, that's a good thing. Uh, so I think there's a perception out there that people are safer. Uh, I think neighborhood quality of life when it comes to small level crimes, though, uh, is something that really needs to be focused on. Uh, the longer someone's in office, the more out of touch they get, no matter how many times they try to walk around the neighborhood. Uh, I think policing at least from what I've read, what I've seen is that there are approaches and maybe people, and I dare I say it, newer faces, people maybe that are newer to the Sheriff's Department might be a benefit when election time rolls around again. Uh, the question will be, will there be someone strong that can do some different things? Uh, while we may not be the murder capital of uh, Florida, we can uh, at least, uh, we should at least look around and demand more. Uh, and uh, rubber stamping, a re-election, uh, I don't think is really leading to progress for us. But if anything, though, he did turn a corner. And if there's any accomplishment, uh, we can say is that uh, that uh, Sheriff Rutherford, uh, and I call him three-term Sheriff Rutherford with some affection in that sense, because it does take a lot to be elected three times in a city like this. Uh, he was able to turn that corner, if anything, to turn that perception uh, that, that people have out there in the community. But there is a lot more to do. And uh, so I hope that he is up to the task for the remainder of his term and that we, we see some progress down the road. All right. Uh, Going to look to the future on this one person. Angela Corey, state attorney. Now, she's not directly involved in politics. She's elected. And, but I, I, I think that there's a lot that she could have potential for to do in the future. The, being the state attorney's unique view 
of the city that one has. Uh, we saw with Ed Austin the success that he had in his campaign. And uh, I would think she could have a possibility of being the first woman mayor of Jacksonville. Now, I don't know if she would run as a Democrat or Republican necessarily, uh, but uh, I think that we should keep an eye on her. Uh, the state attorney's office is a unique nexus to where you see the victims of crime, the limitations of our politics and of our government. And I think that if she gets reelected state attorney again, we might not just hear from her as a state attorney, but possibly as someone out there in the future as a candidate for mayor. So keep an eye on Angela Corey. All right. Well, that's the politicos. Those are the politicos for the city of Jacksonville. Right now, as things stand, May 2013, there's a lot going on in the city. And that's the Jack's Left special series, Who Runs Jacksonville, the Politicos. I'm glad that you were able to join me today, and I hope you enjoyed it. And I want to let you know that we'll have special uh, episodes of Who Runs Jacksonville in the future on this channel. And uh, I want to invite you back uh, this next uh, Wednesday. Uh, every Wednesday, we do a report on the Jack's Left channel, and after the second and fourth uh, uh, Tuesdays of the month, uh, after the city council meetings on the following Wednesday, I will discuss the city council meeting from the prior night. Uh, so it's fun. I think you're really going to enjoy it. I think for those of you who are into city politics, you're really going to like it. Things are going to really heat up as we get towards 2015. And I can't help but let you know what I think. So I hope you enjoy it. Please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and take it easy. See you later.